right. so welcome everybody it's seven o'clock <laughs> and i am rakea gibson let me turn into the camera i'm rakea gibson the owner of the food temptress cookbook store and we feature over 80 uh, over over about 80 cookbooks by black authors and it's so funny because today's chat we're actually talking to a children's book author, a children's picture book author, um, because she has recipes in her book. I was going to say cookbook. She has recipes in her book. So Sade Smith is a Canadian author, and she is a descendant of Jamaica. And look at this gorgeous book, Granny's Kitchen. A, let me get let me get the actual name. Granny's Kitchen, a Jamaican story of food and family. Look how beautiful that is, people. Welcome, Shade. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Great. Um, I had to put my glasses back on so I could mm -hmm. see things. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we're excited to have you. You are our first picture book author. Oh, nice. Because you have these wonderful recipes in your cookbook, in your children's book. I'm going to mess up, you know, a few times tonight. <laughs> so I'm just going to just put it out there. No so let's, let's ask you a few questions first mm -hmm. to get you warmed up. Yeah. Um, describe your earliest memory cooking with your grandmother. Um, my earliest memory, um, I do remember a time when my grandma was making a uh, fried dumpling in the kitchen and I wanted to, you know, I wanted to know how to make them because, you know, I love them. I love the way she makes them. So I was always wondering, like, how do you make these fried dumpling? And then she's, she said, come pull up a chair. Let me show you. So she, you know, I pulled up the chair. I went beside her and then, you know, she let me like knead the dough. She let me put them in different shapes. And then, you know, we dropped them in the pot and then we, made some dumplings so so I how was, old were you when you were making dumplings i was a small child i was probably about maybe like 10 so okay. 10 years ago. yeah okay and for people who don't know what are dumplings um dumplings are like um it's like a dough it's like a it's like a dough so it's like a it's like flour and water that you know you add a little pinch of salt um and then you you know you knead it together and then, you know, you can put them, you can roll them in like circles or like, you know, little ovals or whatever shape. And then you just fry, you, uh, deep, I guess, deep fry them. And then they come out like kind of a little bit crispy on the outside and then soft on the inside, mm -hmm. like soft and fluffy. So, and then that's basically dumpling. That, But that's fried dumpling. You can always um, boil them as well. Like you can put them in soup. And those ones are come out like a little bit more. Um, they're not they're not like crispy or anything on the outside. It's just more chewy, I guess. Doughy, yeah, yeah, very doughy, very chewy. Yeah, but those yes. ones are also good, but usually those go in soup. Okay, so you guys, so we, so I grew up in the Midwest, so we would boil our dumplings. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever had them fried you know as a young person of course i've had them fried as an adult but <laughs> but my grandmother and mother made them and they put them in soup you know mm -hmm. so that was a very good dish to have so tell us about granny's kitchen <laughs> yeah so granny's kitchen is a story that i um came up with um it's based on my grandmother and my sister um, in the kitchen. So my sister used to always ask my grandmother, you know, for breakfast all the time, um, you know, she'd always make her like bacon and eggs and, you know, the typical regular breakfast. And then one day my grandma said, you know what, let me just teach you how to do it yourself. So you don't have to ask me all the time. You can just do it yourself. Um, so that was where the idea came from. Um, and because, you know, I'm Jamaican, so I wanted to incorporate my Jamaican heritage into the story. So instead of your, you know, typical bacon and eggs, I incorporated Jamaican breakfast foods as the recipes in the story instead. Okay. And tell us what are those? So you'll find um, like ackee and saltfish. 
uh, dumpling and uh, plantain. Okay. And what's aki? Aki is a fruit. So it's a national fruit of Jamaica, actually. And it's um, it's a fruit. It's like it grows on a tree and then it, um, it has, you have to make sure, well, and you have to make sure to open for it to open on its own. Um, otherwise, yeah, and the seeds apparently are poison. <laughs> yes, I just read that. <laughs> yeah, but like, so you, you know, you can't eat those, but whenever it opens on its own, that means that it's ready, it's ripe. And then you can, you know, you can fry it up. And then it usually is, you know, accompanied with salt fish. And then um, you just eat it. Kind of looks like scrambled eggs a little bit. It's all, it's yellow okay. and it's kind of like soft. So it does resemble scrambled eggs, but it doesn't taste like it. <laughs> so what does it taste like? It tastes uh, it's a little different, I guess, because you spice it up. So it's, you know, it's all mixed up with the spices, right? So it has like a really good flavor. It's very, very flavorful, but... I guess because you know, due to the spices and everything that you that you put in with it, you know, the peppers and the and the spices and everything. Yeah, so it's pretty. It's very flavorful. It, is it? But yeah, it's usually like a side. Taste? I'm sorry. It's usually like a side. So okay. you mix it up with the with the salt fish, usually. Mm -hmm. So you mix it up together, and then it comes together as like one delicious flavor of everything. <laughs> Would you say it tastes a little bit like mango? No. No? Oh, it's different. Okay. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit so, different. Yeah. It's not like sweet or anything. Okay. Is it is it a fruit that we can find in grocery stores or would we have to go to like an international market or something? It's, you can find it in the Caribbean. I know some Caribbean okay. islands there, but um, if you want to, um, you know, buy it, like not in the Caribbean, you can get it at the grocery store, but it usually comes in a can, okay. which is probably the safer way <laughs> to consume it yes. just in case. But um, yeah, you can definitely, well, usually you can find it in a, in the can in, I would say like a West Indian uh, grocery store. Um, maybe local grocery stores might have it, depends on, you know, their target market, I guess, but some of them do, but usually at the West Indian restaurants, you can, um, grocery stores, you can find them. Okay. Very good. So you could cook all these breakfast dishes, right? Y yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good. So in the cook, in the children's book, the grandmother would always say, gal, you better can cook. And so, yeah. you know, in my, in my mind, I'm thinking, I bet she had an accent when she said that. And I wasn't sure I was saying it correctly. Can you say it like a Jamaican grandmother? Yeah. So it's gyal, which means girl, and you better can cook. Means you better know you better know how to cook. Yeah. You better know how to cook, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> say it one more time. <laughs> so, gyal, it's, it's, so it's gyal, you better can cook. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to go back and reread it and I'm going to try my accent. <laughs> yeah. Always learn with the accent. <laughs> uh, one of the things I, one of many things I liked about the book, the illustrations, first of all, magnificent. Mm -hmm. But also at the back of the book, you put the recipes and then you put some fun facts about Jamaica. Like you have a picture of the national flag. And I thought, oh, what a great learning tool, right? Yes. Learning about a country. So it's really a great tool. Let me just do a flash. You guys don't get it all. You have to go purchase the book. <laughs> um, you can check it out at foodtemptress.com or I left the link in the uh, comment section. So we won't give you everything, but I'm going to flash it for you. Yes. Just some nice... Yes. Wait, let me get this. Some nice, um, see, I did a little quick flash. <laughs> Items, you had Aki, the national uh, fruit mm -hmm. for Jamaica. You have the motto in mm -hmm. there as well and some other things. So that that's great. So what would you say the age range is for your, your book? Um, you know, it's for like fairly small children because, um, you know, those are the kids that are, um learning 
uh, you know, certain lessons in life, you know, like if you, you know, try and don't succeed, you know, keep trying, try, try and try again, which is one of the, um, the mottos and the lessons in the book. Um, also, you know, it teaches them independence and things like that. So I'd probably say, you know, well, we catered it to ages about three to about seven. Okay. So, you know, very small children that I know they like to read along and, you know, you know, say, gal, you better can't cook <laughs> and do the voices. Um, so that would, you know, for the smaller ages, but, you know, it does tend to go up to, you know, probably say about age seven. Um, for those children who are, you know, learning valuable lessons in life that have to do in this, with the story. Okay, very good. So how did you find your illustrator? Because these are wonderful, <laughs> wonderful images. Yes, Ken Daly, he is amazing. Um, it's actually quite funny because I came across Ken's work one time. One of my friends, she posted, um, you know, beautiful artwork on her Instagram and I, I clicked on it just to go look to see like, what is this like beautiful work I'm looking at? So I came across Ken Daly's page. Um, it was entirely coincidental. And I was looking at his artwork and I was like, these like paintings are beautiful. And then, you know, I kind of just like put that in the back of my mind. And then um, whenever it was time to get, you know, look for an illustrator for this book, um, my il my publicist, um, sorry, my publisher, she sent me like a few, like a list of a few names. And then for some reason, Ken's name just like popped out at me. I'm like, I'm, I've am i seen that name before. And then I went to his profile and I looked at his, like his work and I was like, oh my gosh, this is the guy. This is the same guy that I saw his, you know, his work before that I love. So it just, it just seemed like it was just the perfect um, selection. I'm like, you know what? This is who I need. Like, I saw him before. Now I'm seeing him, seeing him again. This has to be some kind of sign saying that I need him to work on this project. So, you know, I went with Ken and I am really impressed with his work. He is fantastic. And so he, your publisher reached out to him and he agreed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the publisher, you know, they reached out and um, asked him if he's interested in, you know, doing this book. And he he said that he read the manuscript and he immediately, like, fell in love with it. He said, I know exactly how I would illustrate this book. And, like, right off the bat, it was, like, in his head. He's like, I know exactly what I want to what I want to do with this. So it was, it worked out really, really well. Good. That is great. And because people always ask, how do you, you know, do I need an illustrator? Well, mm -hmm. you know, when you write a book and you have a publisher, the publisher will find the illustrator. So you don't have yeah. to, but you can, like some people say, Hey, I have an illustrator, you know, check yeah, this person sure. out, but people are always intimidated by that process. And mm -hmm. so that was great that it just worked out for you that you had seen his work previously and then his name showed up on the list. So that was good. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted that. it to be like more, um, you know, the watercolors that he uses and it's like a bit more of like a painty kind of look. That was pretty much what I envisioned. And then, yeah, that was what he, we were on the same page. <laughs> he understood the assignment. <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> Very good. So, uh, why was it important for you to write this book? <clears throat> um, this book was very important for me. Um, well, first of all, because, you know, rep representation matters. Um, I wanted to write a book with, you know, Black characters um, because we don't really see that too often. I remember when I was a child, I didn't really see books with characters that look like me. So I... I think that, you know, it's very important to be able to, um, you know, produce books for other Black children so that they can see themselves in a book, right? Um, it was something, that's something that I've always, um, you know, had on my mind. Um, and I've, like, growing up, I've always wanted to come out with books for other, you know, Black children to enjoy. Mm -hmm. So, 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you for this. <laughs> so the recipes in the book, you have four of them. Are they yeah. your grandmother's recipes? <clears throat> They are, they have, yeah, they are pretty much her recipe. She, I asked, uh, I asked her, you know, how do you make, how do you make these, um, these foods? And she pretty much told me, yeah. Mm -hmm. So these are, this is how she, this is how she does it. Okay. So I am going to try some of the recipes in here, but I'm hoping that uh, you will come back and cook for us. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Sure. Would you like that? Would you like to come back and do like a, a quick cooking demonstration? Because I the would. recipes are really simple. Mm -hmm. um, what tips would you give people who are cooking with their children and using the book? Um, of course, you know, exercise caution in the kitchen, you know, because of course the stove is hot. Um, one thing I would advise for the plantain and the dumpling too, but more so the plantain, uh, you have to kind of watch it because if you blink too long, it will burn. <laughs> and okay. A lot of people, you know, you walk away and then you come back. Oh, no, my plantains all burn. But if you were watching it, then yes, you can, you know, time it and say, okay, you know, it's time to, to come out or time to flip it. Um, but yes, that's one thing that people always <laughs> make that mistake. <laughs> so you would recommend that if the parent is cooking with the child, that they supervise them. So with the frying process. Oh yes, definitely. Show it again. I'm going to show it yeah. again. <laughs> yes. Very good. So what's next for you? Um, next I have a new book coming out. Uh, it comes out next August, so August 8th of 2023. It's called Julie and the Mango Tree. And um, it's, you know, it's about a little girl named Julie, um, named after the Julie Mango. And um, she just wants a mango. And then she just tries all these different ways to get one. And then it's like a huge, like, disaster after that. So, <laughs> so will this so one also I include uh, recipes? This one, it does have recipes, yes. It has mango-related recipes in the okay. back of the Yes. So I, I love that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things that we stress with the cookbook store is writing down the recipes and passing them down. And so your book does that, you know? So your your grandmother, uh, your grandmother and mother have, have, have recipes in here or just and, your yeah. grandmother? Oh yeah, my, my mom too. So you, you're able to write them down, you publish a book, you'll pass this on and it'll just live on in, you know, in people's yeah. homes, you know, strangers now have their recipes. Yeah. And so I love that. And, and I'm sure, you know, your, your, your grandmother probably put her own little spin on it so people mm -hmm. can make it their own, but it's yeah. probably very traditional Jamaican food. Mm -hmm. So I love that it, it's circulating, right? Yes, <laughs> which is exactly. so important because that's one way you preserve customs, traditions, recipes, oh, yeah. uh, stories. Um, do you have a, a story of you and your grandmother in the kitchen? Um, not really. We just used to, you know, I would sometimes just help her out in the kitchen every once in a while and then nothing too much. But she, I do. I love the way she makes the food <laughs> it's so much better coming from grandma for some reason i don't know maybe it's because it's made with love i have no idea but food always just tastes so much better coming from grandmothers <laughs> yeah right right it's their hands it's their you know if you can just capture their hands was, uh, i bet it was difficult for her to uh to like, okay, I, I usually just throw this in. So now she had to measure to give you a, a specific recipe. Yes, that I kind of had to, um, we kind of had to go through because th yeah, like you said, they don't use uh, measuring cups and measuring spoons and things like that. She just says, I said, how much do I put? She said, oh, just a tops. And I'm like, how much is a top? <laughs> like, that's not. <laughs> not even a real measurement, but she, you know, then we have to kind of go through it. Okay. So how much would you say? Oh, about a cup and a half. And it's like, okay, okay. So that's what that means. <laughs> so 
yeah so we did have to kind of go through the actual um you know measurements for the recipe okay good i can imagine but that process was probably fun and interesting you know and it gave you an opportunity to spend with your grandmother yes <laughs> so very good she was All more right. than happy to lend her recipes she she likes to you know she likes when people you know ask her what's your recipe she's more than happy to share she's like oh yes this is what you do <laughs> <She's Aww. happy. laughs> Very cool. So how can our viewers and listeners stay connected with you? Uh, yeah, I'm on uh, Instagram and Twitter. My handle is S S T C underscore Smith. And um, yeah, you can follow me on uh, Twitter and Instagram. All right. And people, you guys have to um, check this book out once more. Granny's a kitchen. Look at that back cover. Look how lovely that is. <laughs> we love this. We thank you. Um, thank you for sharing, you know, the story. And you said it was your sister's story, correct? Pardon? You said this was your sister's story? Oh, yeah. It's about, yeah, about my sister and my uh, grandmother. What did she say about um, being featured in the book? Oh, she loves it. She loves it. She was so, you know, when I showed her the book the first time, she was like, she started like crying. She loved it so much. So I was like, you know, she's like, what? she's like my favorite person in the world, right? So I had to like, I had to make sure that my first story was about her. Oh, it's like really nice. Yeah. <laughs> so as very an author, favorite. as a debut author, when you saw your book, how did you respond? Oh, I was like, it was, I was I was very excited. I didn't even at first I didn't really know uh you know how to react. I kind of just sat there like holding it. Like this is really it's really it's real. Like this actually is out in the world now. I can finally share my stories with people, which is like something that I've been working on since I was like a small child, you know? I was I was a little kid and you know I've always been been writing and you know it didn't really occur to me until I was a grown person that I wanted to be you know an actual published author so it was unreal and it still feels a little still feels a little unreal but I'm slowly getting the hang of it of being you know published author but it, all right well cool and so tell us what else you do besides writing um yeah so I'm actually a design technologist. So I do interior design and architectural technology. And I also do like a lot of hands-on work. So skill trades like carpentry, electrical. So I do a lot of um, like home renovations and, um, you know, construction related activities. So that's always been something that I've been really passionate about as well. So I know. So it's total 180 from writing, but yes. yeah. <laughs> yes. And so how do you find time to write? That's the other question people will ask you. How do you find that time to write? Is a good question. See, well, in the summertime, I tend to uh, reserve my summers for like, you know, my kids and we, you know, we go out and we have fun and stuff. So I don't really write in the summer, but as soon as fall comes, because I live in Canada, it gets really cold so i will you know go into hibernation mode i'll stay inside and then that's usually whenever i get most of my writing done um also like you know weekends sometimes in the evening i'll just come and write down like a few things or if a, even if a like a children's story pops into my head like i'll just write it down like jot notes and then later on i'll just sleep on it and then i'll just go back to my computer and just keep typing little by little but you know, I, 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 I make time for it pretty much. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we know children are very honest about everything. What did your children say about your book? Oh, they love, they loved it. My, my older son, he actually came to me and it was the sweetest thing. Cause he came to me and he's like, mommy, I'm, he's like, I'm so proud of you. And I was like, oh, like, <laughs> and I was like, see, this is why I, this is why I do this. Cause I, you know, I want to keep them motivated, right? I want to keep young people motivated 
to, you know, do things that they set their minds to. So whenever he said that, I was, I was really happy to hear that. Yes. Wonderful. <laughs> well, I am proud of you. I love this. This is my first uh, picture book that I'm featuring on Facebook um, and in the cookbook store. Yes. Uh, I, I think it's wonderful. I think that by including the picture, by including the recipes, you tap into the cookbook, mm -hmm. cookbook lovers, and you <laughs> tap into, you know, the pic picture book lovers. But I think the recipes are appropriate for adults. So, mm -hmm. you know, get the book, use the recipes, share the book with a young person. You know, I think right. um, it's made for them as well. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to cook some uh, breakfast for myself <laughs> this weekend yeah. and let you know how it turns out. <laughs> yes, please. And post pictures. I, I yes. love to see, um, I've had a few people, you know, uh, making the recipes and then they tag me so that I can see the recipes that they're making from the book. And it's just, it's just so nice to see. So if anybody, you know, if you're making the recipes, please feel free to tag me on Instagram or um, on Twitter. I would love to see the pictures and I'd love to see your meals, like you cooking or what you cooked. I would love to see that as well. Yes. So share, please. Thank you. Thank you for that. And so tell people again, your social media and your website. Yeah. So it's uh, at STC underscore Smith on Twitter and uh, Instagram. And also I have, do have a website. It's S-A-D-E-T-Smith.com. So www.SadeTSmith.com. Um, on my website too, I have a, um, a tab called Kids, uh, Kids Corner. So it's basically um, like a tab set up for little kids to um, learn to write a story or to, um, uh, you know, it's also a space for illustrations and things like that. So they can always like download the little um, sheets and they can write a story of their own because that's basically how, how I uh, started. It's funny because I actually have the book <laughs> right here. This was my first story that I wrote when I was like eight years old. The King is called. <laughs> And, yeah, and it's basically just like little pieces of paper with in a cardboard the cover. And this is basically how I got started. I did my own illustrations. So you'll see like little things, just a more up-to-date version of, you know, these templates that kids can always download and they can start writing. How yeah. fun is that? Look at there. All these resources in <laughs> a half an hour. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Sade. Uh, we appreciate you. Fellow Canadian up in Toronto sharing all this wealth with us. And we wish you well. One more look at the book. You guys can get this at foodtemptress.com. It's also in our affiliate store. I left the link to the affiliate store as well as our official website in the comments. If you are listening only, it's foodtemptress.com or foodtemptresscookbookstore.com. Um, you can go straight there. She's on, as soon as you go to the website, you'll see her in the slider going across the page. <laughs> so we thank you. And we're going to book her to come back to cook for us. So yeah. <laughs> at least one dish, at least one yeah. dish. Just let me Just know. When. All right, great. <laughs> well, thank you guys. Until next time, happy reading. Mm -hmm.